I would call to order the uh, October, uh, November 13, 2019 uh, meeting of the Westmont Planning and Zoning Commission. We have a roll call, please. Commissioner Sharp? Here. Commissioner Van Buren is here. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Lavoie? Here. Commissioner and Chairman Carmichael? Here. We have a quorum. Everyone join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, normally we would have uh, the swearing in of, of the public, but first, uh, tonight, uh, special, we'd like to have uh, administer the oath of office to a new uh, board member. Matt Scales, would you step forward, please? Sir. Sure. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Matt Scales, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the laws of DePage County, the Westmont Village Code of Ordinances, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties for the Office of Commissioner on the Board of Planning and Zoning to the best of my ability. I, Matt Scales, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of Illinois, the laws of DuPage County, the Westmont Village Code of Ordinances, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties for the Office of Commissioner on the Board of Planning and Zoning to the best of my ability. Excellent. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. And now, could we have a, a new roll call? Okay. Commissioner Van Buren is here. Commissioner Thomas? Here. Commissioner Scales? Here. Commissioner Lavoie? Here. Commissioner Sharp? Here. And Chairman Carmichael? Here. Still have a quorum. Okay. At this point, we would uh, swear in all testifying uh, attendees. If you would stand, please. And, and repeat after me, I, I swear that I will uh, tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in my testimony. Excellent. Thank you. A reminder to uh, silence all your electronic uh, devices, if you would please. And uh, did you sign in for your testimony already? Thank you. Next item uh, is approval of minutes for the October 9, 2019 uh, regular meeting. I have a motion to approve. So move. Second. Discussion? Uh, questions on the uh, motion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Thomas? Yes. Commissioner Scales? Yes. Commissioner Lavoie? Yes. Commissioner Sharp? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren says yes, and Chairman Carmack? Yes. At, at this point, we would have the uh, open forum. Is there anyone from the public present who would like to speak on any uh, any issue that is not on our in agenda tonight? Uh, seeing none, we'll proceed with the uh, review of the public hearing procedure. Uh, the way our public hearing works is that first the uh, petitioner uh, will come forward and, and be uh, introduced and uh, identify his or her petition, present the petition, it will be followed by staff comments on the issue and and uh, which time the public uh, hearing would be open and the public would be uh, available to uh, comment and question uh, the petitioner. Uh, after that, the public hearing is closed and the, uh, the uh, commissioners have their turn to uh, discuss and comment on the issue. At all times, we have the uh, assistance of the village attorney to uh, make sure we're doing it right and not making any uh, omissions. After that, commissioners vote, and uh, whether it's a positive or negative, uh, the results of the vote, uh, the village planner will send forward to the village board for an upcoming meeting. The petitioner will be notified uh, of that. And uh, as always, this is a recommending board. Uh, we do not have the authority to approve or, or disapprove. Uh, our recommendation goes to the village board, but they have the uh, approval authority. New business. 
For this meeting, uh, planning zoning item 19-026, a request from the Community Development Department regarding the following, a zoning ordinance text amendments to the Village of Westmont Code of Ordinance, Appendix A, zoning, to create definitions and land use regulations for daycare homes and centers in all districts. This includes uh, Article 14 uh, definitions, Article 6, uh, 7, 8, and 10 on residence districts provisions, special uh, permitted uses in uh, residence districts, in business districts, in the C1 district, in the manufacturing district, and in the office and research district. In addition, Article 10, off-street parking. And petitioner, would you uh, approach the uh, podium and introduce yourself? Thank you. Sure. So, respected chairman and members of the Planning and Zoning Commission and fellow resident of Westmont, uh, good evening to all of you. And uh, I'm thankful for the opportunity to present my case before you. My name is Shravani Batala. I'm a resident at uh, 417 Christian Street, Westmont. And uh, I'm a Montessori educator by profession. I'm certified by AMS, uh, to, that's American Montessori Society, uh, to serve the children of age group birth to six years. And I have worked at uh, three different schools for five years, and now I would like to have uh, my own Montessori preschool, which I would like to start from my home. I have applied for DCFS licensing, and I have fulfilled all the requirements all the paperwork is accepted by my licensing rep. And uh, last week, uh, there was a visit by state fire marshal uh, for home inspection, and uh, he gave the initial clearance with a few minor modifications, um, for like three of them, um, which we are in the process of uh, making. And uh, after he gave clearance, uh, the DCFS licensing rep gave me an appointment for next week, November 21st. She would come and visit my home and do the inspection, go through all the paperwork. So I'm very close to getting my DCFS license for running daycare from my home. So here I stand before you to request you to kindly consider uh, making a text amendment to the zoning ordinance, uh, which would allow daycare operations uh, from residential homes in the district. So I uh, know that uh, the village uh, has few questions, so I'm, I'm going to quickly answer those. I have a short presentation made for that. And so the first concern was uh, if it would endanger the public health, safety, morals, and comforts. So these are Montessori daycare activities which are uh, operated within the house, inside the house. And they are op these operations are strictly regulated and uh, monitored by DCFS. Um, so they have a big binder of rules and regulations that we have to follow and strictly adhere to. And uh, they even after licensing, they would make random uh, visits to make sure we are complying with all the uh, rules and regulations. So they, they define the physical boundaries where the children should be, within which children should be, and also give the guidelines of how they should be taken care of, their wealth, their, their safety, their welfare, nutrition. Every aspect is uh, being dictated. The terms are uh, laid out for us, and we have to follow them very strictly. And also they do the background checks and fingerprinting and medical checks for the inmates of the house. So they make sure everything is thoroughly uh, um, vetted out and uh, uh, the parents, community, everybody can trust us fully once we are licensed. So that explains that you know, we, are in, we are no danger to public health, safety, morals in any way. And uh, the second concern is uh, if it would impair property values or injurious to the use and enjoyment of other property. Again, it is uh, uh, the operations are within the house. Nothing is seen on the outside that will be uh, detrimental to the diminishing values of the other neighborhood properties. So on the outside, we are not making any structural changes or any constructions. So. Uh, for, as far as neighbors are concerned, it is just as is now. So no change at all. Only that learning activities will be happening inside the house. 
and then if it would uh, impede normal and orderly development and improvement of surrounding property, not at all for the same reason that nothing is changed on the outside of the property. It is just uh, as it is now. And uh, adequate utilities are taken care of. It's, a, it's running in a functioning home. So all, uh, all of them are uh, maintained at a very high standard and we will continue to do so um, when the operations start. And adequate measures are taken uh, to provide uh, ingress and egress so that uh, there is no traffic congestion. Um, so we are using our driveway. Cars will pull into the driveway. It's a spacious one uh, at any point of time. Three cars can fit in the driveway. And uh, the parents will quickly drop the child, drop off the child at the doorstep, and then uh, they will exit. Um, so, uh, and uh, in, uh, as, as per my experience, uh, it never happened that all parents will come at one time because the preschool timings are flexible and uh, we have one hour window uh, in the morning like seven to eight when during which time the parents can drop off their children. So uh, not all of them come at the same time but should it happen that uh, more than two or three parents are coming at one time then we'll quickly sort out the issue and have a set timing for parents for drop off. And similarly, for pickup, whenever parents finish their work, they, they would come and pick up. So not all of them would uh, come at the same time. But if it happens again, we will have uh, something set out, uh, arrangement with the parents, so that uh, there is no traffic congestion at all. Um, I can guarantee that you know no cars will be standing on the road or parked on the side of the road for, uh, for the reason of daycare. And if we would comply by all the regulations, yes, we would totally abide by all the rules and regulations of the district, of the planning commission, of the village board. And this is the picture of my uh, driveway, uh, just to show you that it is spacious enough to hold at least two cars or even the third car if needed. And uh, uh, I received the review letter, and uh, this is a clarification to the Fire Prevention Bureau notes. So the first concern was uh, the specific use may require significant alterations to this person's home to allow the type of use she's requesting. Um, so uh, actually, we don't need any significant alterations. Um, last week, when the state fire marshal uh, came for the home inspection, he suggested just three minor changes, and they are as follows. Uh, installation of a wall sprinkler, uh, sprinkler on the way to the main exit door and uh, he wanted us to build stairs to the second exit window um, in the basement um, and he also wanted us to build a solid partition uh, separating the furnace area uh, and which we have finished already. Uh, the stairs will be done uh, this weekend and uh, we plan to install the sprinkler uh, in 10 days time. And DCFS does not necessarily work in conjunction with the uh, uh, Illinois State Fire Marshal. Um, so that is not so. Uh, it does work in conjunction with uh, the Illinois State Fire Marshal. In fact, uh, um, only once the Fire Marshal gives the clearance, then only the DCFS uh, makes an appointment to come and visit us in our home. Uh, so that is what happened. We already got the clearance and we have the appointment from the DCFS. Um, and uh, also the fire marshal gave me uh, suggested few minor modifications to ensure safe evacuation of children in case of emergency and we are making those changes once we finish those we will again call the state fire marshal and he will come again to check if they are to the standards of uh, um, fire safety prevention fire prevention uh, safety standards and then uh, he will give us a final clearance and update uh, the DCFS uh, about the same thing and the other uh, concern in FPV notes was uh, uh, one threshold she's requesting, requesting to exceed is eight children. DCFS allows only eight children, up to eight children of uh, preschool age uh, to be taken care of in a residential home. Uh, so beyond eight, I will have to go to a commercial location. Um, so, so I can't make that request at all. Uh, so I cannot exceed eight children. And the, this is clarification to building commissioner comments. 
So uh, he suggested the requirement of a sprinkler system. Uh, we are installing one um, as recommended by the Illinois State Fire Marshal. And uh, the second concern was uh, availability of uh, 35 square footage per occupant. So DCFS allows eight children, so that makes it uh, 280 square foot area. Uh, my, my house has a square footage of 5,500 on the whole, uh, but uh, the areas I would like to use for children, which is basement and the first floor, uh, they would come to a total of 3,400 square feet, uh, which is uh, uh, more than uh, what we need. And uh, requirement of two exits, Yes, we do have uh, those two exits. One is door exit, one is window exit, uh, in case of fire, fire emergency. And concerns about congested drop-off and pickups, we have talked about that, that already. Uh, ingress and egress, so the driveway is uh, uh, spacious enough to hold the cars, and uh, parents will be told not to come at uh, different timings if all of them are coming at the same time. So we make sure there is no traffic congestion at all. Um, and uh, these are a couple of pictures. Uh, this is the classroom I'm setting up. It's a Montessori classroom. It is uh, organized and set up by subject areas. So we have shelves on which there are materials. Kids work on the materials and learn the object too that is designed for. So that is uh, the reading corner and the music corner that you see. And uh, this is the art area that I'm setting up in the second room in the basement. Um, so it's still work in progress. So thank you for listening to me, and uh, I humbly request you to accept uh, my proposal of text uh -huh. amendment to the zoning, zoning ordinance. Thank you so much. When, thank you. Staff comments, please. Um, as you can see, the applicant presented some uh, feedback to our standards that relate to the special use permit application that she submitted originally, um, but we don't have a regulation for daycare centers in the village. So therefore, there is no application for a special use permit. Instead, there is um, the need to uh, remove the silent aspect of the daycare center and homes uh, situation in the zoning code and simply um, add these uses as permitted, subject to state licensing. So it is a simple state, uh, text amendment we are adding parking requirements in the sense that we're adding daycare centers and homes to our list uh, that exists now of parking requirements uh, depending on the different types of uses and the intensity of the traffic um, that would be expected in this case it's pick up and drop off there is no remaining um, you know the clients are children so they are dropped off and picked up there will be no parking of vehicles or anything like that so we have it as a low intensity um, situation also providing for employees uh, to park their vehicles if there is an assistant or uh, you know anything like that so we are recommending approval of this text amendment if you'll notice in the uh, text amendment um, addendum at the back of the staff report I left the uh, residential use table uh, box for R4 and R5 empty because I believe that in a multifamily situation it would be difficult to allow these uses by right in a unit that you know would have to contain eight children and there would be issues with noise and so on so rather than go through the special use permit process for these uses at this time I thought it would be best to simply remove uh, the, uh, by right, and then if there is a requirement for daycare, there would be a daycare center hopefully nearby. Usually multifamily apartments are located near, you know, uh, commercial centers and that kind of thing. Are any of the current um, daycare centers located in R4 or R5? Most of them, no, none of them that I know of Good. are located in R4 and R5. And the state regulations, as we have seen, are pretty stringent, and so they would have to go through that process. If there is a need that we see or a phone call that we receive from the state uh, indicating that they, you know, will be licensing uh, a higher intensity residential daycare home or center, then we would, you know, come to you and see what you decide to do. Thank you. Okay. Would anyone from the public like to speak to this issue? You sure? Okay, we'll close the public hearing.
and uh, open it to the commissioners. Uh, we'll start with Commissioner Thomas. So tonight we have to take care of staff's request before we can do that or we just it's one step or two steps there is one step uh, simply to uh, approve or deny the inclusion of a daycare home and daycare center use within the zoning code um, following that because we're recommending that they be allowed by right meaning is permitted through the business licensing process or in the daycare home situation there is no business license requirement simply state licensing um, there would be no need to come to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a special use permit application by any of these uses in the future. So the people who are already in place mm -hmm. are, as long as they're good with the state, they're fine? Correct. That answers my question. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Commissioner Sharp. Um, I appreciate that we are cleaning this up and I have no comments. It's your turn. Commissioner Scales. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, appreciate it and uh, I have no questions. Commissioner Lavoy. Well, I can't go away with that. I got to oh, ask. No, no, we, we want. <clears throat> uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, one is in your presentation, you uh, clearly made note of the limitation for children. Uh, to be eight, is there a requirement for uh, supervisory uh, and people that, that would oversee those children as far as a number or a ratio between eight children? How many staff do you have to have uh, to have eight children? So for the age group three to, ten, three to six years, the ratio is one is to ten. So for every ten children, one adult. One adult. One adult. So, uh, so that explains that, you know, for eight children, one would be enough, but I plan to hire a helper as soon as I get more than two um, for safety uh, reasons that, you know, I don't want to leave, it, leave the children alone if I have to step out into a separate room to grab something in. So for that reason, I would hire a helper. Okay. Is there any kind of limitation on hours of operation? Are the kids showing up very early in the morning or are they... Uh, coming at normal like school hours so uh, the schools I have worked at they had the hours of operation from 7 to 6 o'clock so I plan to do it from 7 to 5 30 in the evening 7 to 5 30 5 30 okay is the uh uh, building subject to any life safety issues like uh, code requirements would be for public schools. And I know that we have to have inspections within schools to meet life safety code. I, I know you mentioned that the state code and the state fire marshal, but there may be other codes. Like, for example, there may be a code requirement for uh, uh, emergency lighting if the power goes out so the kids can see the stairs when the power is out. Uh, are any of the other, those requirements going to be met? And I'm, I'm assuming that the village would require you to do that. Okay, if the village requires me to do that, I would go ahead and do it. But as okay. far as DCS uh, life licensing requirements, it doesn't require. I mean, all it needed was the fire marshal to visit, and they go with his recommendations to whatever he suggests is appropriate. So this is all we got so far, that to install a sprinkler and uh, build the stairs and uh, a partition wall. Okay, I get it. Sure. And then I have a question for staff. I don't know if they're going to be able to answer it, but just a, a, something that maybe we should look at, and that is that you know, when we have these daycare centers in the village uh, and you, you know where they're at, we get a fire call for one of these buildings. Uh, is it automatic? Does the fire department trigger automatically that these are daycare homes, and do they respond with additional equipment? That is something that would be up to the Planning Zoning Commission to instruct us to follow up with and explore. I think there is a way that there could be additional restrictions, and this is more of a legal well, question. Well, just to interrupt, I think you're just asking, does the fire department know that That's this is correct. a daycare center? I don't know. That's a question we can ask the fire department. Yeah. I know they know addresses, and they have a sense of all the businesses in town. Uh, but I but know if they come to any kind of either commercial or business or whatever, depending upon what business that is they roll certain equipment and what I'm saying is since this is new for us 
are we going to do that? Because uh, if she needs help on a particular day and she needs three ambulances because kids are passed out, I want to make sure that we're rolling on that. That's all. It's, it's, uh, I just want to make sure that the fire department has targeted uh, her particular location and the others in town that uh, we have that and, and uh, whatever they need to do, whatever they feel is appropriate. I'm not posing additional restraint. I'm just asking to make sure that if we get a fire call there that they know that. I think they have a good sense of what businesses are located where. Um, we've got many assembly uses besides and school uses, et cetera, besides just daycare uses. Yeah. Uh, even restaurants have large congregations of people where something could happen and requires specialized fire department response. So I think they're prepared to handle any sort of call. Uh, plus, I imagine if there's a 911 call, probably state they've got a, an emergency and it's a daycare or a, a home daycare, and that would be relayed to the fire department. Then automatically on a, on a commercial daycare, they're rolling different equipment, probably backup engine and truck to go there. So uh, anyway, uh, just a thought. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just one of those things right. that, you know, we want to make sure that, uh, you know, she's protected. And, and mm -hmm. uh, if you have a situation developed, the village is going to be there for you. Yes, thank you so much. Um, is the, uh, uh, the last question, and that's really for the village, uh, with this particular special use, does that carry with the land or does that carry with uh, the individual? To clarify, uh, we are not uh, processing a special use permit application right now. It's just a text amendment. So it's a text amendment and... For uh, permitted use. Yes. All permitted, so it is no, a permitted no use. No there's use. no variations and so right. we wouldn't have a need to do that. Right. No, there would Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have no further questions. That's good. Commissioner Van Buren. If, um, does this applicant meet all the requirements that you have suggested within the code uh, that you're setting up? The requirements for daycare centers are not in our code. Okay, that's all, that's all established by state. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, and so the numbers of people and so on, that's all. And when you read the definition, what we're trying to do is be consistent with state regulations <clears throat> by uh, deferring to the state in all matters um, except for parking. So even the definitions are, you know, consistent with their definitions. So we're not saying we allow up to 10 children, for example, for that reason. Thank you. That's all I have. <clears throat> Thank you. I, I have a question for staff, uh, or perhaps you, you both. That, uh, is there a difference between a uh, Montessori preschool and a non-Montessori preschool with regard to uh, certification requirements? I mean, what do you have to do to use the, the name Montessori? Uh, Montessori is uh, a system of education. It's a philosophy of life. So uh, it is uh, uh, a different kind of educating a child. So, but as far as certification uh, to run the business is concerned, we have to depend on DCFS. So DCFS considers uh, Montessori or not just as daycare. So anything is just daycare as far as DCFS is concerned. So and it, as far as we're concerned from a technical point of view, then Montessori is a daycare. Uh, as a, when I think of it as a school or a preschool, it's, it's uh, under the same category as daycare yes. itself. And uh, so these are all permitted uses, no uh, special use. Uh, I, I think I'm clear on the issue and, uh, and uh, have no, no further uh, questions. Can I make a comment? Yes, please. Um, and just to clarify what staff said, the state has comprehensive regulations for home daycares and daycare centers and everything from size of rooms to outdoor play areas to codes that apply, et cetera. So, and there's a case I can cite you the case, but actually many cases that say when the state has a comprehensive uh, system of regulating a particular business or occupation, uh, municipalities are generally are not allowed to regulate on top of the state. You have to defer to the state, uh, can't add additional requirements. So I think the zoning 
uh, text amendment as proposed does a good job of just sticking to is this allowed and in what zoning districts and I think it's reasonable to say well R4 and R5 may not be appropriate at least at this time unless the state tells us otherwise uh, because of the you know con condensed nature of living with multiple tenants in a single building and if we learn otherwise we certainly could process a text amendment if an applicant comes to the village and provides legal justification for that um, and they can't be regulated as home occupations because they don't meet the technical restrictions for home occupations um, Nalini just a question um, when we list uh, in the re under the residential uses in the R1 through R3 districts um, daycare homes are listed as permitted and then it says to the left of that 1a and is, is that an indication that special condition or, or note 1a applies that says they obtain required state license or certification no um, the 1a refers to the fact that there is a use that is ahead of it in the list and it's alphabetized okay so daycare comes you know instead of inserting a number between one and two the custom is to say 1a and so on and the footnote is um, if you look closely at daycare homes uh, there's a footnote one it's very small um, that's what that would re refer oh I see to. so all of those requirements a through e you're saying should apply to a right. daycare home which means they've got a certificate of zoning compliance, which I think is reasonable. It just says the property is appropriately zoned for this. Um, the one above that letter A, that they have their state license, I think that's required. Um, item C uh, should not be required, in my opinion. Um, well, actually, my concern is are we imposing a regulation that now is over and above what the state may require? because a home daycare has to be for less than 24 hours. So now we're imposing requirements on if you have someone living with you that they have to have a separate bedroom. Um, not Right, if they uh, reside on the premises on a full-time basis, for example, if the uh, helper were to live there on a full-time basis mm -hmm. and agreed, you know, they leave at 5.30, Obviously, that is not something that should be required or makes any sense. The reason uh, it's in here is because for, uh, I guess, streamlining of the code, I decided to add and daycare homes in between, you know, following family community residences. So sure. group homes, <clears throat> family community residences where people stay overnight are, um, are part of this uh, footnote. And rather than create a new one, with different you know so we could create a an item two and just you know delete c or we could leave it knowing that de facto will not be happening and i think the letter d is generic enough to say you know all other applicable codes and ordinances are met uh, that's not saying that you have to comply with any specific code to the extent they're applicable they have to be met but item E uh, concerns me a little bit because it requires an initial building inspection and then annual inspections thereafter. I'm not saying that's improper. I'm just saying the state has a comprehensive system of regulations and what the building has to have in it to qualify for their licensing and it has a system of inspections. So for us to impose a system of inspections on top of that may be problematic and I'll, I know that's something in our staff meeting I said I'd try and flush out still working on that and would uh, that apply to the family community residences as well well it does apply to family community okay. residences so we would want to break it out probably yeah okay in the definition we we do state that they have to have their state licensing and maybe that would be enough we'll have to Sounds have good. to check into that um in the on that same issue yeah. uh, commissioner lavoie did you have a comment on that issue Yes, and, and uh, one of the things that I've seen out, done elsewhere in other communities is exactly that, that the, the, uh, the operator of the facility has to provide a copy of the state license. Right, I certainly like that idea. An annual, so you know in our file that it's been inspected and it's been approved for the next year right. without doing anything. But that's been in other codes uh, that might be of help. 
one of the concerns that we had during our staff meeting on this was, well, what about fire regulations? Can the fire department, do they have an obligation or can they go in and inspect to make sure basic life safety codes, fire codes are being met? And, and that, was, that was my question about life safety issues because the state does require that as an additional inspection other than just annual licensure that, for example, your door closers all work. Your egress lighting works. Everything works for the kids as a separate type of inspection other than your operational uh, license. It's something that they have to make sure that, um, you know, that your facility stays to within code requirements, even though those code requirements change. Mm -hmm. And that's another issue, too. So uh, there, there are certain things that uh, you have to maintain uh, and that was really the thrust of my question as far as the additional life safety inspection. And, and uh, it's good to hear that the state fire marshal gets involved and does do an inspection. The question I think is, remains, and I've got to get an answer by the time this gets to the village board, um, can the fire department also do its own inspection of, let's say, a single family house to make sure it meets certain life safety codes when children are present? And I'll look into that and I think that they do because they have jurisdiction the fire marshal's office has uh, the right and the oversight for this licensure requirement but as far as fire protection it's with the municipality and and the case law is clear that the village has the ability to zone basically set forth the districts in which uses like this are allowed um, they can't prohibit daycare uses uh, home daycare uses for example um, but beyond that, there's some question whether we can impose any other requirements or even do inspections. So I'll look at that. Um, sure. Another question, uh, in the R6 district, which is a special residence district, do you have this listed as a permitted use also? Uh, I do. And the reason is that R6 districts, even though they're multifamily residential, they're aimed at more of a senior living environment, so ancillary commercial uses are allowed, like hairdressers and so on. So mm -hmm. the configuration of the buildings is a little different. It's more of a mixed use, so it is possible to see where a particular building would have enough space, you know, on the ground floor, set off from the residential area that could be a daycare center for families coming or adult daycare and that kind of thing. So, you know, I thought it might be good to just leave it in um, pending state regulation, you know, licensing. Okay. Um, my only other comment had to do with the parking uh, for daycare homes. Uh, you, you list a parking requirement for daycare homes, and then you have a parking requirement for daycare centers. And certainly, daycare centers are allowed in certain uh, more commercial districts or multi the R6 district, so having a parking standard makes sense. For daycare homes, they're operating out of single family houses. And our code currently, uh, section 10.06 K1C, um, exempts single family houses from the parking requirements. Instead, cross references the driveway requirements and says your, your driveway has to meet certain specifications. So to state that they have to provide um, one off-street parking space for each 600 square feet of floor area for a single family house. I'm not sure that we should be doing that. I, my preference would be to eliminate the parking requirement for daycare homes completely because they're gonna have a driveway. That's all they're gonna be able to provide. If people need to pull up on the street and park on the street temporarily to okay. in and out, they can do that. If that is acceptable, that makes sense. Uh, in terms of the square footage uh, for a 3,200 square yeah, foot home divided by six, you large know the homes. Uh, right. Um, I thought it might be good to have that for drop off and pick up. But if the planning commission uh, feels that it is acceptable to have cars parked on the road temporarily for those driveways that are narrow and shorter, then you know that's something that you can uh, definitely vote on. Let me know. Certainly there's no restriction like that for home occupations where they have temporary deliveries, drop-offs, you know, by a mail carrier or whatever, 
or a custom one customer comes in at a time so I don't know why we but the only <laughs> difference I might uh, suggest is that with children you know they tend to run out, run out in the street or that type of thing there might be a situation where it might be recommended or more desirable for them to be on a driveway um, but other than that you know that would be a, the only difference I can think of and then my last question w w with the uh, daycare home definition which has a maximum of eight clients at any one time mm -hmm. um, I think it used to be 12 yes and now it's eight is that is that the current there was some discrepancies between different definitions and you know we're deferring to the state and we wanting to be consistent we felt it would be better to leave it at eight and also some feedback from uh, different individuals that we've spoken with it would be for this community probably more desirable to limit it to eight as well so coincidentally it is consistent with the state that so the state statute does say a daycare home is up to eight right and there are also fire codes that are a little bit different in terms of how they look at it for group homes which they the definition of a group home in relation to building code zoning and fire are different so for the fire code group homes are daycare centers that have more than eight children so because of those discrepancies we felt it would be better just to keep it at eight that's all I had, thanks. Okay. One, one quick question, we're wondering, how is this uh, sprinkling area by the, uh, by the main door going to? Uh... Uh, it's uh, as soon as we uh, step out of the basement um, to the door, in between the basement and the door. So on the way out to the main door exit, uh, main exit door, uh, so we have to install it on the wall, so it's, it uh, splashes all over. So how does that work? You have to, to re-plumb through the... Yes, yeah, we have to the call the plumber. We are uh, getting the quotes at this point. Um, so we have to draw the from the water line and uh, have it installed on the wall. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, I agree with, uh, with the village attorney on, on that uh, parking off-street parking requirement I, I, for a daycare center or a daycare home. It seems too much. Uh, before you call a vote, I just want to make sure everyone's yes. clear on what you're voting on. If, if you're clear, I won't say anything. If anyone has any confusion, I can just try to make it clear. Go ahead. Okay. So the zoning code currently doesn't say anything about daycare homes. And when someone calls and says, hey, can I do a daycare in my home? The first thing we do is look in the zoning ordinance. And when the zoning ordinance is silent, there doesn't say anything, then we're sort of in the dark. So this is a proposal to add a rule that is very clear. Can you have a daycare home or not? And the, the recommendation from staff is to just make it a permitted use. You can do it. You don't need to get a special use permit. So you wouldn't have to come in front of you it would just be allowed subject to meeting all of the state requirements. So you're not voting on, on this nice woman's specific proposal for a Montessori school in her home at her address. Her question to us of whether she could do it raised the issue of what kind of rules do we want and we're recommending you just say they're permitted uses. So you're voting on a new rule just clarifying that home daycares are permitted and then she would be able to do what she wants to do, as would other people. And no one else would ever need to come in front of you. So does that help explain or clarify? And thank you, thank you, because it, it yeah. could be diffuse here uh, yeah. with, with what we, the issue before us is, is the zoning text amendment. Further discussion? We're all gentlemen now, you know, we don't, Everyone on the board is a male uh, right now, so I can oh I can God. say gentlemen. Uh, I'll wear my red dress next week. Uh, anything else? Uh, I would uh, entertain a motion to uh, approve Planning and Zoning 19026, this, uh, this uh, text amendment. <clears throat> so moved. Sharp. So moved. Sharp. Second. Second. Thomas. Thomas. Okay, we've... Uh, have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion, uh, questions on last chance, yes, sir. Would it be helpful, and, and could we ask the attorney to maybe just list the two or three things that might be tweaked or, or edited from what's in the staff report, so we're all clear? 
Yeah, the motion would be, I guess, subject to pending investigation on um, the footnote one, uh, imposition of inspections, et cetera, whether those would be compliant with the state requirements. <clears throat> also, it would be, um, uh, would include the elimination of the parking requirement for daycare homes. And would that also include the local fire? That's part of, the, I think, the, yeah, the inspection would determine the applicability of local fire. Because if, if building codes clearly do not apply, but we have jurisdiction to perform fire inspections, then we'll clarify that footnote in that regard. I think that's important because I've also had some other uh, experiences over in Downers Grove where there was one sprinkler, the, only a portion of the building was sprinklered, and the uh, owner had to finish that system because it gave the firefighters a false impression that, that the building, the entire building was sprinklered when it really wasn't. So it's something when they entered the building, they got water, but as they were in the core of the building, there was no water. So uh, that's, uh, I'd really want to have the fire, uh, local fire uh, uh, inspection to be included. That's if the state law would allow, you know, right. and that's, for the, I think what the investigation. investigation is before the village board. So we would um, have the motion that would be subject to that finding, and then we would modify the staff report and the text amendment to show whether it is possible. Then we'll include it for a vote in front of the village board. Okay. Excellent. Roll call, please. Commissioner Thomas. Yes. Commissioner Scales. Yes. Commissioner Lavoie? Yes. Commissioner Sharp? Yes. Commissioner Van Buren votes yes, and Chairman Carmichael? Yes. So, uh, you will now go before uh, the village board. And, uh, so, the attorney will do some work and, and make the edits that are needed to address the issues that came up today. When that work's done, then uh, Nalini and I will schedule it for consideration by the village board, not at next week's meeting, uh, possibly at the meeting after that, depending on if, if all the research and work has been done at that point. Okay. Okay, new business complete. Uh, we have uh, one miscellaneous item, and that's uh, an update by the planning department on the, uh, the East Quincy rezoning initiative. Johnson. Okay, um, we are conducting a study uh, that will end probably in December, December 8th, uh, that involves rezoning the properties east of Cass along uh, East Quincy on the north side. So the properties right uh, along that edge are zoned residential. However, the uses are more business heavy industri or middle industrial uh, manufacturing. So we'll be having a community forum coming up with the property or a business meeting really with the property owners across the street to present a proposal and a recommendation and come up with a preferred scenario for these rezones. Um, and then we will be presenting that at the PZC hearing on December 8th. Okay, and uh, perhaps a, a, a background a bit, uh, if you would, the history of, of the, the zoning along uh the, north side the zoning of along that area has been through throughout, I guess, since 1979 and so on. It's had multiple changes from B1, B2, back to B1. Some properties were zone manufacturing. Then in the, I guess, 19 or 2008 or something like that, um, it was determined through the comp plan amendment uh, study leading up to the comprehensive plan that transit oriented development would be suitable at that location. So more townhomes. Um, where people would be able to walk to storefronts and that kind of thing. Unfortunately, throughout these 10 years, we haven't seen much of that happening. The market hasn't borne it out. The footprints are not large enough or whatever the, the situation might be. So the property owners right now are faced with a situation where they're not able to sell their properties um, because they're zoned incorrectly. So we're simply going to be recommending that they be rezoned back to what they were zoned before and consistent with the current uses or to a new category that would match the current uses if they were not conforming earlier. 
And so we're in discussions individually with each property owner so that they're, you know, uh, opted in to whatever preferred rezone proposal we present at the forum on the 20th. So at this forum on the 20th at the Westmont Center across the street, it's for the public, you know, people come forward and, and uh, give their concerns. And, it is a community and meeting. It is open to the public. It will be at 630 at the chamber in the uh, community room. And we do recommend that if people are interested in attending that they contact us, uh, the Community Development Department, to give them a little bit more information ahead of time and to reserve a spot because, you know, we'll have uh, need for knowing how many people will be attending. And now, to be clear, at the completion of that meeting, you will come forward to back, back to the planning and zoning or straight to the village board? It'll be to planning and zoning for a, a rezoning uh, Correct. Request. It'll be a presentation uh, with a preferred proposal and discussion and a vote and a recommendation to the village board for final approval. Okay. Well, I think this is probably overdue. Uh, any discussion here on that? It'll, we'll get our turn here in, the, in another month or so. Uh, does uh, any commissioner have uh, anything else they'd like to add? Anything coming up? Announcements, uh, in which case, uh, I would entertain a motion uh, to adjourn. We anticipate in December. So move. We haven't discussed the date. Just that one, though. Second. Comment. Second. So we have a uh, motion to approve in a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned.